Good morning, everybody. Happy day to you. It's a Sunday. We get to start it off together with each other. Some of you have been Mile High National up there. You guys have been enjoying the, the heat of the day. Yes, it's supposed to be almost 100 today. So we get to just everybody just take a deep breath right now and enjoy all this coolness. Being together, look around, see who you're worshiping with right now. This is good to be gathered today. Hey, a couple of announcements before we begin. Please do fill out the friendship pads right here. Notice the prayer request cards that are in there. If you're carrying kind of a heavy burden today about something, we, we want to know about it. We want to lift that up in prayer for you this day. So let us know about that. Also see the prayer, the uh, online giving cards that are in there. They're green if you, when the offering plate comes by, so you don't feel like a schmo, you know, like I don't really contribute around here. It's like, no, proudly use that little green card. Like, I contribute online uh, for not only this place, but also for, for the community out there and how we as a church support the community offerings that there are. Hey, lots of things, of course. I know it's summer in the middle of July, but we're still it's just such a busy church. It's not just Sunday mornings where we're active in the community. It's, a, it's all through the week. So many things are happening. Uh, we concluded our Love, Inc. Uh, slightly used clothing drive. Thank you for all of you who contributed to that. If you want to continue to do that, uh, talk with Nan, who's the head of our mission team. And uh, it's just amazing, beautiful things. Uh, when people who are quite needy come, they're given a certificate, and they are able to shop for free. Especially think about uh, uh, back-to-school uh, clothing that people are getting for their kids. So they can go to Renewed Treasures, and they show up, and they're just like shopping like everybody else. And it's just such a neat thing because of your donations, because of your cash donations also to Love, Inc. It's just a beautiful thing. Uh, Women of Grace is a group meeting on uh, July 23rd. Uh, congregational meeting we're having on July 30th. Uh, we have the uh, First Love Women's Retreat on September 9th coming up here. And uh, Grace Small Groups, there's a thing in the email bullet email that went out uh, that said if, if there's a link to it. There's over 12 small groups around here. So if you're kind of feeling maybe disconnected at all or, or not just enough interaction with people on a Sunday morning, find the, that small group that is perfect for you and you'll get to know people in a, in a deeper way. Uh, also, uh, Lunch Punch we have. Uh, it's a Monday, it's the first Monday of the or maybe it's the second month, the first Monday of the month. That'll be next on uh, August 7th. So many things to be engaged with and be part of. And so I hope you're glad you're here this day. Find a way to connect up in a deeper way if you need to or want to. And I'm glad all you Swifties are here. You know. <laughs> we had, how many people went to the Taylor Swift concert? Jessica, I know you did. Justin's dad went to the Taylor Swift concert. Justin's sister, yeah. It's pretty cool, yeah. I like to see the smiles on your faces. This is cool. This is great all being together. Let's begin our worship together. Let's stand up, get some blood flowing, although it's not like a rocking tune. You guys know this one with a little bit of a different chorus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, 
has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains my chains are gone i've been set free my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. One more time. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, unending love, amazing Stay standing. Close your eyes as you stand. As you are standing here in this sanctuary this morning with your eyes closed, I want you to consider all the ways that you were fake this week. All the many times that you put on a mask, that you tried to wear your facade well, that you had your warrior armor all stacked up on top of you. All the many times you didn't really feel safe this week with other people. All the many times that you took this step out in the world really anxious, really afraid. And I want you to step into this act of confession this morning, this act of vulnerability, and to begin to remove the mask, to crack open the facades, to lay down the warrior armor, and to realize that you are now in front of your creator, your God who loves you, who holds you, who embraces you, who says, you are mine. I made you. I love you. You can be you with me. I know all the stuff about you already. I know all the things you're trying to hide. And I still love you. I know all the good about you. I know all the potential and capacities and abilities that I've stuffed inside of you that you don't always let out. I know your beauty and your pain. And I am here. And in that spirit, friends, I want you to open your eyes. I want you to look around at one another. I want you to see yourself in other people. Because around you this morning are people just like you. People who've smiled when they didn't feel like smiling. People who have held back tears this week. People who have grit and gone through it all. Who have slogged through the mud of regular life and have shown up here 
feeling all the many things that you have felt and feel just as vulnerable before God and one another as you. That, friends, is this beautiful word that we call forgiveness. Forgiveness isn't just this act where we say, oh, you offended me and I am letting it go. Forgiveness is recognizing yourself in the other person and that God has forgiven them and you the same. So I want you to take a moment, find someone that you did not come to church with this morning in the same vehicle, and I want you to mouth these words, you are forgiven. Ah, uh, you see that? You see that? What happens right there, friends? And in that forgiveness, we offer one another grace, don't we? So let's do our grace blessing together this morning, saying, Grace in me, and grace in you, and grace in all of us. If there are any kids, you can go hang out with Jessica over there at the activity table this morning, or stay put right where you're at as Charlie leads us in the next song. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter. My all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross when Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay Light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of Christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, 
Jesus commands my destiny. You guys don't have those words. No power from hell. Here we go. No power from hell. No scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. And now you may be seated, friends. I have the privilege this morning of introducing the Reverend Rafat Gurgis, who you all, many of you know Rafat. He is a friendly, friendly face around here. He's done several things with us in worship over the last many months. Rafat is uh, part of our Denver Presbytery Incubator Program. Just as you think about startups in the business world, uh, the Presbytery has an incubator program to create new worshiping communities, and Rafat is part of the group who is starting new worshiping communities here in Denver Presbytery, and he gets to be hosted by us here at Grace Presbyterian. We serve kind of like home base for him, using internet and office space and our facility and our people and all those sorts of things. If you were not at last Sunday evening's intercultural gathering and dinner, you, friend, missed out. We had 41 folks here all doing all kinds of wonderful, wonderful stuff in mingling and intermixing and communicating and sharing about our faith and lives together. And you missed the best falafel on the planet, okay? Reverend Rafat Gurgis had grew up in Egypt, began serving as a minister there, came to the States in the 80s and went to the most incredible seminary on the planet, McCormick Theological Seminary, which happens to be my alma mater, okay? There in Chicago, he has uh, served all around the United States, everything as far out as L.A. on the West Coast and on the East Coast, North Carolina and D.C. area and Virginia and all those things. And then somewhere in the middle of all that, he served for 17, 15 years as the Director of Evangelism and Multicultural Ministries for the Presbyterian Church denomination in Louisville, Kentucky. And now he is here with us Without further ado, the Reverend Rafat Gurgis. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> thank you, Justin, and thanks to all of you. What an honor to be among you, with you. I'm so grateful to such a beautiful spirit that I experienced since I came here. Your warm welcome, your participation, contributions to this new intercultural ecumenical community of faith which meets right now only once a month. We're going to meet again the 13th of August and we're going to have all Asian buffet uh, this next time. And we are welcoming all people of all walk of lives uh, because that's what truly I believe the church is and what you also believe. Because I do, uh, and you're going to figure out this from my sermon today, that this sermon is not as much as it is for you, but for you to carry it and to preach it and to live it. Uh, because you have it, you just simply wanted to share it. And that's what I'm going to be talking about later on. Before we read the scripture, I would like just simply to quote the uh, uh, transcript or the uh, introduction to apparently four or five weeks coming, uh, starting last week. And so Justin tells us that the focus is going to be on the following themes. Um, and he made this great introduction. The reason I'm, re I'm reading this, so that as you read the scripture, you will be engaged and you will connect last Sunday 
with this Sunday and also with the Sundays to come. Uh, so Justin says, congregations across the United States are struggling. We live in a culture of an institutional decline where we are suspicious of, of organized religion, often for good reason. Uh, into such a world, we must cultivate thriving faith communities that are full of vitality, vibrancy, and an abundance mindset. To become such a thriving faith communities, we must embrace five practices. These were passionate worship. Justin addressed that wonderfully, and we were all engaged last Sunday with that great passion towards worshiping God. And he quoted, he focused on Psalm and today as well. And then the second one is intentional faith development. And that's what I'm going to be focused. I'm going to leave the rest for next time. As for the intentional faith development, which I'll be addressing today, he said, faith is developed as we imbibe uh, uh, the word and allow it to infuse every bit of who we are. We become the faith as the word takes residence in us. The word of God takes on flesh in us in a world full of bumper stickers, slick me messages, manipulation, outright lies, uh, to not hurt feelings, and headlines that are algorithmically, I hope I'm saying that right, that's a hard word for me, designed to catch our attention, and intentional embodied face is needed more than ever. That's what I'm hoping to share with you today. And, and now, as you have this in the back of your head, let's read the scripture for today. I'm not going to read the whole psalm um, that assigned for today, 119, 105 to 112, just as the first verse and the last verse, because in between, it's simply repeating exactly the same thing. And that's the way that the Hebrew um, poetry, uh, and by the way, the Arabic poetry is as well, you know, they... they the, the first part or the second part is almost the same as the first part, but in different uh, wording. So uh, simply Psalm 119, the whole thing is talking about God's word, and he used several words for it. The word, the law, the decree, and all of these things, the same meaning. So uh, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. My heart is set on keeping your decree to the very end. And um, verse 1 and verse 2, uh, verse, uh, 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 sorry, 105 and 112 uh, of Psalm 119. Now, let's read some uh, of the New Testament. And this time I will read from Hebrew 5, 12 to 14. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about the righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by, con by constant, same thing as Psalm, constant from the beginning to the end, by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. And the last reading is Ephesians 4, 13 to 16. And see the, uh, see the similarities between uh, Hebrew and between Ephesians. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, then we will no longer be infant, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Justin, in his introduction, referred to that when he talked about what's happening in the world and the deception that we hear and the liars, the lies. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, 
that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part, each part does its work. Okay, so you know that Egyptian or Middle Easterners in general, Middle Eastern Christian, they take their Bible very seriously. And when they preach, they go on and on and on until people fall off the window sometimes, <laughs> just like the book of Acts. But the good news for you today is that since I became a Presbyterian minister, and after my very first sermon in North Carolina, that was in the 90s, and um, it was about 45 minutes and 28 seconds, the whole sermon. And that's for Egyptian is nothing. So I'm shaking people's hand by the, wind, by the door, and one of the elders looked at me, and I just had a little scratch in my face, and he said, Pastor, from where did you get that cut? And I said, well, this morning, this is my very first sermon in English, and I was trying to concentrate on it. So I accidentally cut myself while I was shaving. And he looked at me and said, Pastor, this is too bad. Please, next time, concentrate on your shaving and cut your sermon. I am not going to promise you that, but I'll do my best. <laughs> to understand the, the, the faith development, um, we need to know a little bit, and many of you are actually studied, and I studied in the United States, so I studied this stuff. And I had uh, six years of sociology, so I'm going to be reflecting a lot about that. So George Land is one of the anthropologists. He came up with a theory uh, of transformation. And he talked about uh, human development. And he summarized the human development in three stages. And these three stages, the first one he called the accretion or accretion, and he called this is the infant stage. This is the baby stage. And it almost takes the human being from its birth until it reaches adolescence. This is the stage he called it of an individual who pools all the resources of the community to himself or to herself. Quack, 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 all night long, okay? I don't care if my mom didn't have enough sleep or my dad has to go to work tomorrow. I just want it to change. I want it my milk and I want it right now. We all experience that, correct? That's the early stage. It is uh, focused on play and, uh, and selfishness and desires uh, uh, and I am uh, and myself and, uh, uh, and the rest of the world in, a, in another uh, place. I need all my need to be satisfied, period. The second stage, when this infant grow up, become a child, um, and then grow up and start to get out of himself and recognize that the world is formed of, of, of other people and other friends and, and need and find himself or herself in grouping. So that will be the second stage of, of growth. And George Lentz call it replication. That's when they replicate each other. So people get together, you know. Uh, they talk alike, walk alike, think alike, and either you are one of us or you are not. You're against us. And of course, you're familiar with the peer pressure during all of that time. That's the second stage of growth. And he called it replication. Now, I can go on and on and tell you exactly that even our churches is like that, all right? You know, African-American by themselves, Euro-American by themselves, Hispanic by themselves, and so forth. Nothing wrong about that. It, it, it is a better stage than the first one, correct? Um, but what we are truly looking at in the scripture here is a completely different story. I'll get to that later. The third stage of growth, he defined it as the stage of mutualism. That's when these people, um, you know, start to, to look, oh, no, the world is, is not just our group. The world it consists of so many people from all over. And we need to interact and collaborate and work together. And 
in the stage of mutualism, to prove it, scientists talked about flowers. Uh, if, you, if you plant uh, one plot of one kind of flowers, it's not going to do as well, and you can try that as if you have a plot and you're gardening here all the time of so many different flowers. They enrich each other. Uh, if you ask a farmer, will tell you a lot about how one kind of flower uh, fight insect, uh, another kind of flower uh, fight drought, uh, and they look much healthier. Um, Ford, the, the dealership, uh, was struggling with the Japanese for so many years. And then one year, they did a big, huge conference. They invited people from all walk of life. They got mechanic, they got designers, they got housewives, they got uh, professors, they got people who know nothing about car. They invited people who love Ford and always drove Ford, and they invited people who don't like Ford at all. And the designer was a strap. You know, what has this to do with designing a car? But as they got together in this huge conference, that was the defining moment in the history of car making in Ford. And Ford start to compete with the Japanese again. And of course, as they went up and down when they focus only on big vehicles, and then the gas prices and all these crises, we're not to focus on the same or sameness. And the Bible, when it talks about sameness and similar, never meant to conformity. It actually empowered diversity and, and, and knows that growth and strength comes out when we interact. And the word mutualism itself, it means nothing if it is a group of the same. You know, one condition of practicing a living mutualism is to be different than the others, whether in, 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 in your own mind, in your shape, in your color, in your religion, and everything. <laughs> that kind of diversity generates great depth and wealth that the world would never know. And I think the United States is one of example of that. And we truly need to live up to that example and also many other places in the world. All right, now we've done with the sociology, let's get to the Bible. And I put it in front of you here, the three stages and the three stages. Do you think, the, do you think we find roots in the scripture about these three stages? And I happen to feel that way. So first, I would like to look at the infant stage, which is in the Bible called the milky stage, uh, the fleshly stage, uh, the, but the worldly stage, that's when we just conform to whatever the world tells us, whatever the media make of us, whatever other people uh, tell us, that w without the scripture. If you have both going along, if you are grounded in the scripture and growing into that uh, phase development, you will be able to answer all of these questions and all the challenges that we face. So I'm going to go through a couple, not all of these scripture reading, but let's uh, start with the one that talks about uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 10. Uh, this is another, in addition to the two scriptures that we read, but look at this. This is uh, the message to the Corinthians. And in that message, Corinth, or the church in Corinth, was very rich, was very gifted, uh, all kind of gifts in the world, but they had a problem. They were fighting with each other. They didn't value and appreciate or celebrate that diversity of gifts that they had, and that was their problem. So Paul was not happy with that. He said, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 to 10, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. And now we know what does it mean. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, indeed, so that was the first stage, okay, the milk stage. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. That's the second stage. 
because you're grooving. Listen, for since there is jealousy and quarreling uh, among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and others, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human being? And that was the replication stage, the party stage, the denominationalism stage, all of these kind of things. We are the one. We are the right one. You're wrong. You're not quite. We, we have nothing to do with you. That's the replicative stage. And I believe that's what we see in the country today. And we wanted to say and to play different symphony for the country, to bring it to its senses, to bring our leadership in every place, even in the church, to their senses that we need to grow. And I'm not, again, I'm empowering you, I'm affirming you, because that's how I felt in the last few months by associating myself with you. And we need to take that message to the next step to help God's people to grow. Here is a, uh, well, we already read Hebrew, so to save time, I'm not going to read it again. But look at this, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 11 to 12. That tells you exactly what, the, what was going there. Uh, there were four parties in that church. So he says, my brother and sister, some from Koloi household have informed me that there are called cords, Another hard word for an Egyptian to say. Among you, what I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas or, or Caiaphas. Still another, I follow Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Can you imagine, isn't that what we see today? All of these different parties, and they're okay if they work together. But when you consider extremism in the world religion, don't you see, like here it says, and we are Christ, means we are Christ party. In Islam, there is a party called Hezbollah. You all have known that, all right? So it's, we are not going to be this one. We're not going to be that one. We're actually the true one. We belong to God. We're God's party. The same thing in the Christian religion. There are people who were Christ. We're only Christ. Okay. All right. What does that mean? What does it mean? It's not to be an extremist and not to see the other and to be integral part and in relationship even with those people who are um, different than you because that's maturity. That's maturity. That's mutualism. Okay, moving from that two stages, let's get into the good stuff, mutualism. All right, so I think you got an idea, and all the scriptures are there in front of you if you want to make a note and go back and look at it. I'll, I'll, I'll look at mutualism and the way we develop our faith because I feel, you know, it's okay that we believe that salvation can happen in a moment. But that's not the end of it. Yes. And it can be dramatic for some people. It can be gradual, like majority of you, like myself. I had huge guilt when I start to be exposed to conferences and retreat where I feel pressure to cry or pressure to come to the front and all of that. That can be okay. But there are people who can, your children, grow up in the church and Sunday school and then go with you to the congregation, grow up and go through this. The Bible tells us to fulfill our faith with fear and trembling, meaning that gradually we grow into Christ and grow to that stage of mutuality and of perfection when we grow together. So look at this. There are five titles here that I bought, and I'm not going to go through all of this, but take a note of that. Number one, that to grow into and to develop your faith, First, we need definitely to let go of our childish behaviors. And 1 Corinthians 13, 11, remember that 1 Corinthians 13, 11 comes after 12, comes after a time 
when Paul was giving the Corinthians the way out of that struggle, out of that conflict, and telling them about the body of Christ and the different parts. And then on 13, he tells them the top of all of this, the thing that makes this happen is love, is love. And love means respect, appreciation, celebration of the other. And that's a mutualism. So he says in 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 11, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a complete human being, I put the ways of childhood behind me. And that means I, I let go of my selfishness. I let go of my... Um, I, I show my vulnerability. I, sh I show that, okay, I am there with you. I would listen to the other. I use yes and instead of no but, as we said last week. The second thing, eat solid food, meaning independent thinkers. Do not be, uh, do not completely, when in, in the last three years, I, I always talk to people and say, come on, what a channel, what a channel that you're watching? And if they say, say for instance, CNN, I say, well, okay, good, watch Fox as well. If you're watching Fox, also watch CNN. I'm just saying a simple example. It's okay, because that helps you to be an independent thinking, thinker, to investigate the fact. Does the Bible tell us that? Yes, it does tell us. Look at uh, Ephesians 4, 13, 15, and Hebrew 5, or uh, 514 and what I wrote here is not not to uh, toast back and forth by the waves or blow here and there by every wind of teaching the mature people they have the ability to distinguish good from evil and to speak the truth in love collaborative is the third one and uh, let me put it that way first Corinthians 12 talks about the body of Christ. I'm just going to give you a little example of it. Can you believe one day after you had a, a very hard day and you walked a, light, uh, walked a lot and then you went home, you took off your shoes, and of course, you know, you cut a little stinky uh, feet. Can you imagine that the nose would say to the feet, you're stinky, I'm going to cut you off of the body. That can't happen, right? That's what we mean here, is we are, the church should be, and we all should be, and the whole world, in fact, be one body carrying each other misery. And finally, sacrificial focus on the other. For that one, I have to read it. And I would like you to look at Philippians, because this is really the top of the line. This is truly maturity. Do nothing out of selfish ambition, or vain, vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in, every, in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedience to death, even death on the cross. That's mutual, mutuality, that's maturity. My brother and sister, I, 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 I truly feel for you, the world is changing. There are a lot of demographic shifts, demographic changes in this country and the whole world. One thing we do is to turn our way back and just reel or withdraw. And one way to stay and witness of what we truly believe and to help everybody to get mature, to let go of a childish behavior. As we listen carefully to the way the world speaks, that's worldly, that's fleshly, that's the infant stage, that's a childish. But as you, as for you, God's people, the message we send there. For people, that growing diversity is the babbling of a world falling apart. But for God's 
people. This is the birthing of a new world that God is giving birth to. Amen? Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Can we pray together? Oh, gracious, holy, and loving God, we are grateful for scripture this morning and for Rafat's message. We are recalling the times, oh God, when we have acted like infants, when it was all about survival, meeting our needs and wants and desires. We're, we're confessing to you, oh God, those times in our lives where we've acted like teenagers, where we just try to be like everybody else. And God, we do want to be that mature way. We want to be in our faith and in our life and our words and our actions in a place where we are accepting and welcoming and looking for mutuality, where we're seeing the blessing of everything and everyone. God, help us to be like Jesus, our Savior, who humbled himself on the cross, the ultimate model of God. And so those places in our world, in our country, in our families, and our lives where there is infancy-like behavior, and teenager-like behavior, God, we offer ourselves to you this day, body, soul, mind, and spirit, so that we might walk more like the Christ whom we have faith in. Lord, we offer these, this prayer, and the prayers and concerns, and the fears, and the tears, and the worries, and the hungers of this world, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray in this way, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. You guys know this song, so you're going to sing along. We're going to start again. Here we go. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. So pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. So pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 holy. holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, so pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, and pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. 
I want to see you. I want to see you. Mm, friends, this is a time and space where we need one another. Where if I had to pull out my wallet on my own and do something about ministry and church, it's not going to get me very far, right? But when I look around the room, I go, well, they might have something, and they might have something, right? And we start putting all that together, and actually something happens, doesn't it? Yeah. My dollar doesn't go far, but our dollars go real far together. So in this space here this morning, we're going to practice a little mutuality, right? We're going to put it all together. And some of us are going to write some checks. Some of us are going to pull out some cash. A lot of us are like, I need to put in some card from that thing we passed by earlier because I already give online. And some of you are like, I don't do any of those. Uh Uh-oh, what do I do? And that's when you pull out this. You go to gracecolorado.com slash give. And you give by credit card this morning. With that, let our ushers come. So a little curveball. Uh, I think I've got a more well-suited uh, song for uh, the sermon that was provided. It's uh, easy enough. You're not going to remember all of these words, but you'll figure it out. Love will hold us together, make us a shelter to weather the storm, and I'll be my brother's keeper so the whole world will know that we're not alone. Sing along as you can. It don't have a job Don't pay your bills Won't buy you a house in Beverly Hills Won't fix your life In five easy steps, no Ain't the law of the land or the government But as soon you need it, love will hold us together, make us a shelter to weather the storm, and I'll be my brother's keeper, so the whole world will know that we're not alone. That's the chorus. You can sing along next time we do it, all right? It's waiting for you. Knocking at your door. Every moment of truth when your heart hits the floor. When you're on your knees, then love will hold us together, make us a shelter to weather the storm, and I'll be my brother's keeper, so the whole world will know that we're not. This is the first day of the rest of your life. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Because even in the dark, you can still see the light. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. This is the first day of the rest of your life. This is the first 
day of the rest of your life. Cause even in the dark, you can still see the light. It's gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright. One more time, here we go. Love will hold us together. Make us a shelter to weather the storm. And I'll be my brother's keeper. So the whole world will know that we're not alone. The year was 2005. I was 25. And I was serving as a youth pastor in Fresno, California at University Presbyterian Church. And I was working with youth pastors all across a very, very diverse city. And we had an interfaith youth council. And we had teenagers from all sorts of different faiths and denominations there were Catholics and Protestants and Evangelicals. There were kids who were Mormon. There were kids who were Muslim. There were kids who were Jewish. And as a starting point, my associate pastor at the time, one of my dear mentors who died last year actually, handed me a book all about multiculturalism and interfaith. And on the bottom of that book was a name, Rafat Gerges, who I had no idea who he was at the time. And six months ago, Rafat walked into my life, and I realized he's been leading me for a very long time. So Rafat, it is a joy, an absolute joy to have you in our midst. Let us stand this morning for our benediction Friends, you get to go out into a world that oh, so often is infantile and adolescent, that loves its tribalisms, that loves to go me, me, me all day long. And yet you and I have this beautiful, mature faith, one that is big tent in scope, one that is open to one another, one that loves the diversity of God's good creation. So let us go out this morning taking Rafat's message, taking the message of Scripture with us, and not being tossed back and forth and to and fro with all the different media personalities that seek to bend us towards their ear, but instead that you and I go out into the world with this message that the Holy Spirit of God goes out into the world in front of us, that the wind of God is at our backs, that the breath of God is all around, on your left and on your right, above you and below you, inside of you, and all around you, today and forevermore. Make sure you greet Rafat as you go out today. Thanks for being here, everyone. So the whole world will know.